Assalamu alaikum, very good morning to all students. Hopefully you are well with your families, okay, anyway safe looking at this video. So today I would like to introduce to you a module 3 for data communication and networking which is protocols and models. So this course, uh, this module basically has been uh, given to you, has been introduced to you during the weeks before uh, COVID-19 pandemic happened. So in order to keep track with the assessment later on, okay, I would like to make a revision video for this course as well. So model three for protocols and models. Okay, inside protocols and models, basically what do we do? What did we do inside the protocols and models? So basically we studied about the rules of communication and networking. So, in case you guys are familiar with that we humans are commonly communicate with each other. So, the communication fundamentals that we have is basically you need a sender and a receiver and also a media. So, basically you as a human when you communicate you, have, you are the sender and the person who hear you communicate is the receiver and the channel which is the sound wave that coming out from your mouth. Okay, this is what we call the media. So these three elements, sender, receiver, and media, plays an important role inside communications. So basically, what exactly a protocols, communication protocols, basically. Okay, so all communication, basically, they are governed by protocols. So what is protocols? So protocols are rules which every communicator should follow. So the rules may vary according to the protocols, but in order to successfully deliver the message, so the rules is required for us to communicate. Okay, so basically you need a message source, a transmitter, a transmitter medium, receiver, and also a message destination. So this one, even though it's a communication between a human, between a human and a human, so it's also a model where we communicate between a computer and a computer in terms of sending messages or uh, data between two hosts. So four rules, okay, individuals must use established rules or agreements to govern the conversation. So basic rules for communication are grammars. So each language they have different grammars like for example in the English language you have a particular grammar that you can you should follow in order to communicate effectively between two persons. So if you see comparing two sentences okay the top one and the bottom one so the first message is difficult to read because it is not formally formatted properly. So if you see they they did not follow particular rules of grammar, languages, rules. So it is hard to understand. But you see in the second uh, second messages, so they are connected with a proper grammar, okay, with a proper language, a constant language, which is an English language, and with a proper English grammar. So you can listen, you can read the message properly and the communication can occur effectively. So protocols must account for these four following requirements, which is an identified sender and receiver, common language and grammar, speed and timing of delivery. Okay, different people speaking with a dif different speed also can inter interfere with the communication process. And confirmation or acknowledgement requirements. Okay, like for example, when you are talking to somebody and the person not. Okay, means that this is a sign of confirmation and acknowledgement of the communication that has been conducted, were understood and were received by that person. So for network protocols requirements, okay, common computer protocols must be in an agreement including the following requirements, which is it must have a message encoding, message formatting or encapsulation, message size, message timing and message delivery options. So all these are required in terms of effective communication between computers. So when you want to send a message, it's important for the computer to encode the message into a certain form. So this encoding method is a process of converting this information into another acceptable form of transmission. So you cannot transfer all data in forms of ABCs. 
because why our electrical signals cannot recognize ABC so mostly they are transferred using a binary information in forms of electrical signals so at the receiver end once uh, once the sender converts and codes the messages into an electrical signals binary binary messages inside the electrical signals the receiver will decode these messages okay and it will reconstruct again the messages into a form of readable message readable message for you so that the communication from the host and the receiver can be completely established so the formatting and encapsulation for the messages is almost similar as you want to send messages through the posts okay through the post so you have a message that you have like in form of data okay and inside a post uh, mail like for example okay uh, you have a sender address a recipient address and also a kind of like this is not is a step which is acknowledgement by the sender itself okay so all these protocols that you have in post office okay we have it similarly inside a communication protocol as well so you have like for example you have a source ip address destination ip address that represent the source computer and the, and the, the receiving computer okay destination computer and also you have information regarding how long is the message okay uh, when is the message will end what kind of message is this so all of this is inside the encapsulation process so when you see when you post a parcel like for example from one place to another okay you have to establish uh, you have to disclose what is the content of your parcel is it a dangerous uh, items is it a fragile item or something like that so messages also have some classification for those kind of messages so in terms of different kind of messages they can provide different labeling to them so that at the end for the receiver for the destination to process the message to construct effectively they will refer to this information to reconstruct the message again after to de-encode reconstruct and de-encode the message again after receiving from the sender so the message size they play an important role in terms of communication as well so you cannot send a very huge file at once basically okay in yes in terms of some of the communication that we have right now you can say that oh i can send some of the large file immediately fast enough to another person but basically technically it's not uh, the large file in one chunk being sent to that receiver so a large file usually they are split into multiple signals okay multiple signals so these signals the, that letter will be reassembled like a puzzle okay they will be reassembled like a puzzle to recreate again those large files so they are converted into bits basically okay and then the bits be changed into pattern of light sound or electrical impulses and then the destination host must decode those signals to interpret the message so bits are easy to split because they are 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. as long as you know how big you want to split it okay you can split it any any chunk that you want okay the important part is that at the other end in destination okay how does the destination recognize those bits and reconstruct it again to make a proper message whole again so this is one of the issue that in the protocol okay that the protocol is used for to overcome so about message timing okay when you send message okay uh, you have uh, to include flow control and also response timeouts so flow control manages the rate of data transmission and defines how much information can be sent and the speed at which it can be delivered and response times okay manage how long a device wait waits when it does not hear a reply from destination and the third one is the access method so the access method is how the communication determines when someone can send a message okay so this is really important because sometimes okay only one messages can be sent by one sender at the same time and sometimes you can send from both sides at the same time 
Okay, so there are a lot of rules governing issues like collision. This is when more the more than one device sends traffic at the same time and the message become corrupts. Okay, some protocols are proactive and attempt to prevent collision. Other protocols are reactive and establish recovery method after the collision occurs. So this is a lot of issues regarding uh, communication, two ways communication at once. So for messaging delivery, so basically we have three types of message delivery. So the first one is unicast, the second one is multicast, and the third one is broadcast. So unicast is basically one-to-one -one communication. Multicast is one-to-many. So maybe from one PC to two or four PC, but not all of the PC inside the network. And you have broadcast. So and then broadcast means that from one source you send to all the PCs inside the network. So broadcast usually used in IPv4 networks, so which is common in these days, but are not an option for IPv6. Okay, so in later modules later on, we will have an anycast, which is an additional option for uh, distributing messages for IPv6 without the broadcasting method. So in terms of uh, Okay, uh, unicast, multicast, and broadcast. Okay, in terms of we want to visualize. Okay, how do we send the, the messages to as a unicast or whether it's as multicast or as broadcast? Okay, so unicast basically from one point to one point. Okay, and multicast one point to several point, but not all point. Okay, and broadcast is from one point to all point inside the network. So when we talk about protocols, okay, so protocols basically they govern either software or hardware or both software and hardware relation, okay. So they are implemented on device as a software, okay, as a hardware or both as software and hardware. So protocols have their own function, their own format and their own rules. Okay, so there are protocol type for network communication, network security, routing, and also for service discovery. Okay. So the functions of the network protocols basically, okay, it for addressing and reliability, flow control, sequencing, error detection, and application interface. So addressing means it's identify sender and receiver, reliability, they provide guaranteed delivery, flow control, ensures data flow at an efficient rate. Sequencing, uniquely label each transmitted segment of data. Error detection determines if data become corrupted during transmission. And also application interface, process to process communication between network applications. So if you see, like this person here, I will send this message across the network using IPv4 header. And then this router, this is a router, okay. It says that I can forward this message because I understand the IPv4 header. And then this is a server, which is the destination. Okay, he said that I can accept this message because I understand IPv4. So all these messages are using an IPv4 protocol. So that's why they can communicate effectively between all these components. So regarding protocol interactions, okay, networks require the use of several protocols. And each protocol has its own function and format. So, okay, for example, as a message here, when you open a web browser, for example, okay, there are four protocols involved. First one is HTTP, the second one is TCP, and then IP, and the fourth one is Ethernet. Okay, so HTTP, which is the hypertext transfer protocols, okay, they governs the way web server and web client interact. They define the content and also the format. TCP, which is transmission control protocol. They manage individual conversation, provides guaranteed delivery which ensure the reliability of the message and they manage flow control to make sure that all the message okay, from the sender and the receiver being transmitted properly. And the third one, Internet Protocol, this one deliver messages globally from the sender to the receiver which is they define the address of the sender and also the receiver. And then we, lastly we have the Ethernet. This one deliver message from one NIC to another NIC on the same Ethernet local area network. So one NIC to another NIC means that this is from one device to another device. IP, Internet Protocol, they send from one sender to destination, but Ethernet, 
they governs flow from one device to another device okay so it's not a destination device okay but it's a through the device so like for example you have your phones you want to message to another friend phones okay you are using a wi-fi for example one device means that from your phone to the wi-fi router first and then from the wi-fi router to another another router on the connection and then from to another router and then to another wi-fi router and then from the wi-fi router go to your friend's phone so for each router connection phone to the router router to the router router to another router so all of this is being governed by the ethernet protocol so nic represent each component all the routers they represent as one nic okay each router is a n n nic and your phone also count as an nic as well which is network, network interface controller okay so from the protocol suit okay so protocol must be able to work with other protocol so protocol suite is a group of interrelated protocols necessary to perform a communication functions so all of that i mentioned before http tcp ip and also ethernet protocols they are a part of what we call a protocol suite okay and then the protocols are viewed in terms of layers we have higher layers and we have a lower layers okay so lower layers concerning moving data and provide services to the upper layer basically so the upper layer like for example you have the content which is the, the message here where is the cafe and then you have the rules root layer so the rules layer we recognize whether it's a, a common language okay and then we recognize whether it's instant to respond okay it's instant to, to transmit okay so whether it has to wait for the signal to finish so this is where the rules layer lies on and finally we have a physical layer so the physical layer is where we see that one person is speaking to another person through his own phone or whether it's face-to-face -face conversation okay so this is where the physical layer involved so there are several protocol suits basically so the most common part is the internet protocol suit or tcp ip okay the most common protocol suit and maintained by the internet engineering task force which is ietf so this is a very very large body okay in the world that governs the internet and then we have open system interconnection osi protocol developed by the international standards of uh, the international organization of standard for standardization iso and the international telecommunication union itu okay other than that we have apple talk okay which is a proprietary suite released by only for uh, released by apple inc for its product and we have novel network proprietary suite developed by the novel incorporation as well so we often use okay for the common part which is commonly used by all the industry that related to networking which is the tcp ip protocols okay so the tcp ip protocols basically they have four layers the top one which is the application layer and then we have the transport layer and then you have the internet layer and finally you have the network access layer so they are for governing all the message transmission from device to device in the internet okay inside the tcp ip protocol suite okay they are used okay to de define the standards for data types standard for communication platform and standard for a lot of things okay in internet communication internet addressing and there are a lot of things inside the tcp ip protocols that uh, some of you might find familiar and some of you might find it as a little bit uh, rare for you to see when you access the internet okay like for example if you see the http https so what define this is a protocol that governs the web and web services so they are different protocols http and https and they will be treated differently when they are being transmitted through the networks okay so all of these like for example for domain name system we have a name system under the system dns protocol 
Okay, then you have a host config DHCP, you have an email, SMTP, POP3 or IMAP, for file transfer, we have FTP, SFTP, TFTP. Okay, so all of these govern the content of the files, the data that be transferred. Transport layer, we have TCP and UDP. Okay, which is the TCP is for mostly for your data transfer that can have a handshake between the receiver and the and the sender UDP is another way is like a phone call where you one person send uh, it's like a one person send the message okay despite whether they have a confirmation from the receiver or not and then you have internet protocols that governs the addressing okay and for messaging and also for routing okay and then you have the address resolution for ERP and then you have in the network access layer you have the added net resolution and wireless LAN resolution for the wireless protocol and internet protocol under the network access layer. So all of this layer is for you to recognize easily what protocol involved inside the communication. So when we want to demonstrate, okay, like for example, a web server encapsulating and sending a message to a client. Okay, the data is only a little bit out of the all data that involve out of all data involved in the communication. So you have a user data, and then based on the data, the transfer control protocol will create a TCP segment by adding a TCP header inside it uh, with the coding next to the data, and then you have an IP packet where it includes IP addressing inside the segment which involve TCP and the data and finally you have the Ethernet frame where it includes Ethernet header that includes device addressing under the MAC address with all the the addressing and other things involved with the data as well so as one capsule okay you can call it as one capsule it will be uh, sent from a sender to a receiver in the form of bits okay in the form of bits so when the receiver receive this data okay so firstly they will receive it as an ethernet frame so the ethernet frame okay they will remove the ethernet header and then they will create an ip packet and then they will remove the ip header after certain confirmation they will create a tcp segment again and then after the TCP segment, they will remove the TCP header and then they will take the user data to produce you the content. So this is one, even though it looks like a lot of job, but it is occurring very fast in your PC. Okay, so all these protocols, they are governed by standards organization. Okay, these are one of the, uh, these are all the standards uh, organization that governs what we have in the internet and what we have in our communication right now. So they are important in order to encourage interoperability, competition and also innovation. We don't want every maker's company, component maker's company to create their own version of network instruments because it's highly possible that they cannot communicate with each other. So when they have a standards for communication, all these uh, makers, all these innovators, they have to abide with these standards in order to operate with all other components that have been used by the user currently. So this one, okay, encourages that one thing, the benefit of this is that you will use e-waste okay we previously we had issues okay like for example 20 years ago all handphones might have different connectors because all of the makers they are making their own connectors okay so once you change your phone you cannot use all your old connectors for your new phones okay your own cables okay you cannot use the old cable for your new phones and then uh, this create a lot of e-waste and a lot of e-waste issues around the world so they use a standards which is they use a usb afterwards they use all usb ports and even though okay you are a different maker you have to about uh, abide to the rules that all of the makers they have to utilize the usb port okay so these days even though your phone is in different makers you can still use the charger or you can still use usb cable from your previous phone okay because of they have governed 
the standards for the cables being used by all the smartphones. This reduce trashes around the world for the e-waste that these makers have provided. Okay. So for the standards organization, we have an internet standards. Okay. So the internet standards basically is governed by the Internet Society, ISOX. Okay, so this promotes the open development and evolution of internet and under them we have Internet Architecture Board, Internet Engineering Task Force, Internet Research Task Force. So this one is to maintain the internet basically. And then we have uh, for the internet standard we have the ICANN which is corporate for assigned names and numbers and also Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, IANA. So they are the one who governs the domain names, okay? You see that you have .com, dot, for different country, they have their own domains, okay? IP addresses for each of those country, TCP, UDP port numbers, okay? IANA, IANA is the one that governing the, all these uh, addresses and protocols that involve with the communication uh, identifiers. And then for the hardware standards, means the electronics and communication standards for uh, the hardware device, usually they are governed by the IEEE, okay, you have EIA, TIA, and ITUT. So all of them, they govern the standards, like for example, the cables, the spectrum of the communication, okay, the cable connectors, okay. And then uh, we have uh, what kind of uh, communication, like for example, uh, you have uh, like uh, Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G, okay, all of these standards, they are governed by these bodies currently. So, for all network administrators, okay, you will have a reference model for all these protocols, okay. So, the basic protocols models is OSI model and also the TCP IP reference model, okay. So OSI model is a, a more detailed version of the representation, reference model, but they serve the same uh, purpose in classifying the protocols of what purpose they are used for. Okay. So when we use the, the reference model, the good thing is that we know which part of the communication point that we are going to interfere when we need to do some innovations or we need to do some maintenance in a, for the communication device or components or even uh, applications that involve okay so it is used in protocol design because protocols that operate at a specific layer have defined information that they can they act upon and a defined interface to the layers above and below they foster competition because products from different vendors can work together. They prevent technology and all capability changes in one layer from affecting other layers above and below and provide a common language to describe networking functions and capabilities. So this is basically their job. So we have at least seven layers in the OSI model that involve application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and also physicals. And each of them, they have their own functions that is described in these slides. And for the TCP IP protocol, a more simplified version, they have four layers, which is application, transport, internet, and network access, which have the, the function as I described before, application is for representing data to the user, transport supports communication between various devices across the network, internet determines the best path through the networks and con network access control the hardware devices and media that make up the network. And then if you compare both of these models, you can see that for OSI model for layer 7, 6 and 5, they falls on the application layer inside TCP IP model. Okay, for transport is the same as transport in TCP model. For OSI model network is is under internet layer in TCP IP model. And for layer 1, layer 2, physical and data link layer, they are fall under network access layer inside the TCP IP model. Okay, when we encapsulate a message, okay, in case there are a large chunk of messages, okay, so using those protocols, they will segment the message into several messages. So this is to increase speed 
and it increase efficiency basically in case there are some failure of certain points in the message send they can resend that message and reconstruct again it's like a puzzle they miss one piece during the first uh, first sending the message they can send that piece only later on to fill in the puzzle at the end of the destination so in case there are two or three or multiple persons sending at the same time using one line okay they will have a sequencing like this in case of this person and this person two person are sending they will sequence these messages so that both of them have the benefit of using the internet at the same time okay if this uh, in case that in case that the only person they, they do it by host to host without the sequencing means that only one person will get privilege for using the internet another one has to wait until the first person finish using it so this kind of like uh, bad for you in case of we want to expand the internet for, to everybody who wants to use it so sequencing help everybody get access and if the line is bad then everybody will get a bad communication at the same time okay okay so uh, for all the protocols okay from top to bottoms okay so they are protocol data unique involved so protocol data unit like for example this is case of email data okay so the email data in this case is being split into three three segments so the transport header contain the details of the segment so means that this data is from which segment with the first second third segment and after that they will include the network header that involve the ip addresses of the sender and the receiver and also here is still the segment number and then finally they will include the frame header which is from which device to which device is the communicating first occur and then from another device they will continue with a different frame header later on so for the tcp header transport header and data that is what we call segment and with the network header we will call ip packet and then with the frame header is what we call an ethernet frame so the ethernet frame is where all this data is being converted into bits and they will be sent as an electrical signals towards the communication uh, the communication devices okay one it being sent as capsule okay at the net frame which is a capsule so at the net frame as a capsule you will see that they have the ethernet header ip packet header ip header uh, and you have a transport transport header and also the data being sent at one time okay so this is being sent from the receiver to uh, the sender to the receiver okay and this is what we call an encapsulate messages okay uh, this is what we call an encapsulate messages so when they receive the message okay at the receiver the receiver will de-encapsulate those messages okay so what they do in the for the encapsulation okay they will remove the chunk from the ethernet the chunk from the ip and then the chunk from tcp and up until you get they will get only the data and they will reconstruct the puzzle imagine that they've been sent the data is being sent like a puzzle so each puzzle piece that being sent they will be conducted with okay which point okay which point the puzzle is okay for example this is all uh for for vertical is number one for uh, horizontal is number one and then this is what it represents in under the tcp segment and then ip is from one person to another person and at the net is through what transport the person has been sent maybe it's been sending through uh, a person uh, through a, a truck first and then they go to a motorcycle and then they go to by hand so this is all this component is being de-encapsulated by the receiver until they got the puzzle piece and the receiver will reconstruct the puzzle inside its own computer and next is about the data access okay so for both the data link and the network layers use addressing libre data from source to destination basically 
So network layer source and destination address and also data link layer source and destination address. So in network layer, they have what we call IP address that represents sender and receiver, which is the source and the destination of the message, of the message, okay? So data link layer, they have what we call a MAC address. So MAC address determines the components that interconnects those messages. So for example, from your phone to your Wi-Fi router, they are between one NIC to another NIC. And then from your Wi-Fi router to a larger router, one NIC to another NIC. So every time different communication, different device, different NIC device communicate with each other, the Ethernet header will change according to the different MAC address, address communicating, but the IP address it will not be changed. So and until from this receiver until the send that IP address will remain a change, but depending on the NIC interconnecting between the receiver and the receiver, the Ethernet header will change. So in case you see that IP packet, IP packet they will this is what we call a logical address. They will send from the source up until destination here. Okay, the IP address will go through immediately directly towards the end. Okay, so in IP, pack, uh, IP address, they have what we call a network portion and also the host portion, which we will uh, explain later on in IPv6. Okay, the left part of the IP address usually represent the network portion and the right part represent the host portion. So how far left, how far right? Okay, we will do this in the next, uh, we will do this in the, the module of IPv4 addressing. Okay, so this is what represent the source and the destination of the message. Okay, for device in the same network, okay, you can see that for example, in case PC1 here want to connect with the FTP server, okay, so the PC1, okay, they will have a same, uh, the IP address of the PC1 and the FTP server of the, uh, the IP address of the FTP server, and also the source and destination of data link at the net frame header. This is what we call the MAC address, okay. So the MAC address, we have the source here and the destination here. So this one can be communicated immediately under, under one network. Okay, so this is what we call as MAC address. So in case you are communicating from one PC1 into a further, a further, uh, a further device, okay, here this means that a web server, okay, which is not uh, which is not inside the same network, you will see that the header, the source and destination for MAC address, okay, they will change according to the device. Okay, the first one, okay, it will be under from PC1 to R1, and then after it receives to one R1, this green addresses, source and destination, will change between R1 and maybe R2 or any other between it. Okay, R1, in case this one, R1 and R2. And then we have from R2 and the server. They will change every time it reaches a new device. So this one, okay, PC1 and R1. And then after it receive from uh, PC1 and R1, okay, like for in this case, okay, R1 is here. Okay, the destination and the source address will change as well. So this one representing from R1 until R2. For example, the source will be from R1 and the destination will be from R2. It will be R2. Okay, and then when you reach R2, the source will be from R2 and the destination will be the final web server. So this one will change according to the device and the IP address will continue remain from the sender to the receiver directly up until the end. Okay, so they will change continuously from one single device to one device, okay, up until it reach the destination. Okay, so that's all for today. Hopefully, you can use this video to study for your midterm exam. And uh, in case that you have any question involved, please don't hesitate to ask inside the comments for this video in your Google Classroom. 
Okay, I appreciate if you want to ask it in a YouTube video, but YouTube video is kind of public. Okay, maybe some of you doesn't doesn't like to to put comments in a public place where everybody can see it. So you can put it inside the Google Classroom. Okay, the in the comment area inside the Google Classroom. Okay, under the video. So later on, okay, hopefully we can continue with other courses as well. So that's all from me, Dr. Shafiq. And stay home, stay safe, and stay study. See you later, inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.